our world is in deep trouble and is expected to get worse. Our water, air, and soil are polluted. There are calamities by land and sea, earthquakes, flooding, tsunamis, hurricanes, tornadoes, and the list goes on and on. Every day, minute by minute, there is something bad going on. It seems as if we cannot escape the evils in this world. Is there hope for humanity in this troubled world? In this new series, we address an age old concern that we all have, the concern for sin, evil, death, and what happens after we die. Is there any hope after death? When God created humans, he intended for us to live forever in a loving relationship with him. But this relationship has been broken by sin. Here we address the origin of sin and we look more closely at death and dying. But instead of looking at death in a negative way, we look at it in the context of hope, the promised hope based on what Jesus did for us when he died and came back to life again. Holy Father, we live in a world in which evil is the thing of the hour. We need intervention. Shower us with your promised hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Bad things do happen when we sin. Sin has consequences. When we disobey God, we face the consequences of our actions. Sometimes, many times, those consequences are far reaching. This is the case with Adam and Eve. Eve was captivated by the persuasive argument of the serpent. His lies were so enticing. At the time, like us, Eve did not realize that her sin would cause so many terrible things to happen. She did not anticipate the far reaching consequences of the road she had chosen to travel. When Eve ate the fruit, she disobeyed God. Her loyalty changed from God to Satan. That's what happens when we sin. Genesis 3 talks about Adam and Eve and their life after they sinned. It was not the fact that Eve ate the fruit. Eating the fruit was not the issue. What was significant is that she disobeyed God. Eve broke her loyalty to God and accepted a new allegiance, an allegiance with Satan, God's enemy. Genesis 3 describes the fall of Adam and Eve, and it indicates what are the most horrifying consequences of their disobedience. This lesson describes the results of their sin from four perspectives. See if you have had similar experiences. One, from a theological or a spiritual perspective, Adam and Eve developed theophobia. They became afraid of God. Genesis 3.8 tells us they hid from him and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Two, from a psychosocial perspective, Adam and Eve became ashamed of themselves. In Genesis 3, 7, 9 through 13, we see that they were ashamed of their sin and felt guilt. Thus, they started blaming and accusing each other. Genesis 3, 7 says, Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Genesis 3, 9 through 13, Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? 
Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. And the Lord said to the woman, What is this you've done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. From a physical perspective, Adam and Eve would sweat feel pain, and eventually experience death as expressed in Genesis 3, 16 through 19. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, curse is the ground for your sake. In tall you shall eat of it all the days of your life. But thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. For, from an ecological perspective, Adam and Eve observed the beginning of ruin and decay. The natural world became so degenerate, death became part of the lives of the plants and animals as indicated in Genesis 3, 17 and 18. Sin spoils much of nature's beauty. The Garden of Eden was no longer as beautiful and pleasant as it had been before sin. Adam and Eve witnessed the flowers hang down and the falling leaves. These were the first signs of death and decay. These signs of death caused Adam and Eve to mourn more deeply over the death of the frail, delicate flower that we now mourn when our loved ones die. The dying flowers caused Adam and Eve to feel sorrowful indeed. But when the leaves fell off the beautiful trees, Adam and Eve clearly understood the harsh reality that death was now a part of life for every living thing. Adam and Eve didn't die immediately but that same day, God pronounced their death sentence. The Lord told Adam in Genesis 3:19, in the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it, you were taken, for our dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Sin, the fall of Adam and Eve brought terrible consequences to all humanity. Paul explains in Romans 5, 12, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. Today, the sad and painful fact is that we continue to suffer because of the bad things that happened in the Garden of Eden. But there's hope. Because of Jesus' death on the cross, we have the hope of eternal life, not in this world, but on a new earth where sin will be no more, nor will it ever happen again. Let us be thankful to Jesus for his help in rescuing us from a dying world. Furthermore, let what happened to Adam and Eve help us to better understand the far-reaching consequences of our own evil behavior and flee to the one able to redeem us. Even though Adam and Eve would suffer consequences of their sin, God in his loving mercy offers hope for humanity. That hope is found in the first gospel promise he gave to Adam and Eve. What was that promise? Find out in day six, the first gospel promise.